We've been doing everything we can, learning and adapting as fast as we can, and preparing for a future beyond the pandemic. All I know that after almost two years of physical, emotional, and psychological weight of this pandemic and had the impact it's had on everyone, for many of us, it's been too much to bear. We're in a very different place now, though. We have the tools. We're also increasing testing. Should we have done more testing earlier? Yes, but we're doing more now. We've gone from zero at-home tests a year ago to 375 million tests on the market in just this month. If you buy a test at a store, your insurance will reimburse you. On top of that, we're making 1 billion, 1 billion at-home tests available for you to order and be delivered to your home for free. It was remarkable to me. I, you, you, we were texting. Mm -hmm. It wasn't mentioned that there was 1.2 million cases of coronavirus in the country yesterday, which is an undercount. It wasn't mentioned that there was nearly 3,000 deaths yesterday, which again, I, I, I couldn't tell you if that's the exact number. It's probably an undercount. Yeah. There were some questions on COVID, but it, it was not treated as urgent. No. And it seems to me it was not treated as urgent because there has been kind of like this coordinated between the Democratic Party, Biden and the media to basically make it like the fourth or fifth story in newscasts yeah. and kind of have this mentality like, well, we got to learn to live with it. I'm not calling the lock shit down and, you know, tie you up. But I don't know. Yesterday, nearly 3000 people died. 1.2 million cases. He was the clip I just played. He's saying casually, yeah, we probably should have gotten started on testing sooner. I mean, I in October, they were offered uh, a plan for free rapid tests. They turned it down. They're just sending out N95 masks a year into his presidency. By the way, it should be in the billions. But since we offshored all our jobs through NAFTA, we probably don't even have the manufacturing capacity here to make that many. I mean, I could go on and on. There's so many problems. I mean, you saw it. You're it's like an um, onion. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, you, you've recently been sick, so you know that what a what a uh, Hunger Games it was to go get tested. It just seems like I don't know if he's delusional or they're just trying to put lipstick on a pig, but it's still very an urgent situation. And I think I'm is. I'm not convinced based on what they have done, based on the CDC's messaging. Um, I'm not convinced. If there's a next variant, the response is going to be that much better. Now, there's it, it, all they seem to care about is the economy. And I would, you know, given my experience, um, I would like kind of sort of urge people to realize that that COVID isn't solely a respiratory disease. Right. So there are their main focus has always been, you know, your lungs being on a ventilator, all of these things. But there's all of these other underlying conditions that you could end up with. Like I have I'm I'm dealing with like a weird nerve damage thing. Right. So I've been able to breathe fine. I haven't had any respiratory illness. I'm never going to end up in the hospital on a ventilator. Right. But I still am dealing with something that I think is is something other than mild. I can't walk upstairs very well right now because of the nerve pain. So to be so clear, it, just to be clear, because the audience, not everybody in the audience knows you've you have. Mm -hmm. COVID, well, you had it. Yeah. You're not positive anymore, but you had it within the past right. two weeks. Uh, however, you want however much you want to share. You didn't have to be hospitalized, but it did knock you out in terms of you were sleeping a lot. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, it, there's a lot of fatigue involved. So everybody that tells you there's fatigue, they're correct on that. You just want to sleep a lot. But I think this idea like I thought maybe I'm losing my mind with this this pain I'm having in my foot when it started. I'm like, this is so weird. What could this be? It almost felt like did I fracture my toe? But I I've been holed up in bed. How did I fracture my toe? Right. So you go through this whole thing. But it turns out that that, you know, the doctor basically said, you know, listen, it's not just res respiratory attacks, your entire system, the coronavirus attack attacks all systems, not just your lungs. So there are other things that you can end up dealing with. And I say long term, we don't even know what all of those things are yet. Right. Who knows what the um, to sort of anecdotally put it, who knows what the shingles version is of COVID. Right. If, if you don't know what I'm saying, shingles is something that you can get if you've had the chicken pox virus years later because the virus is dormant in your body and your spine and shingles is this horrible painful thing that you could have right so there are long-term consequences from every viral infection and i don't think we should be so lazy fair about what those things are especially with a new virus that we don't still we still don't know to this day what it's all about so i i was really kind of off put by 
by both Biden and the media with how they were talking about that. Like, I think his most important thing he wanted to get across was that 95% of the schools are open. Very few schools are closing. Over 95% are still open. I've talked to some parents. They're not okay with that, actually. Some of them would prefer to have distance learning. They want to keep their kids safe, especially if they have other children in the household that are you know, younger than five. Can't well, get also, Well, also, it doesn't get talked about. I mean, this is anecdotal, but I, my mm -hmm. aunt is a teacher and one of my best friends is a teacher. Both of them have basically told me, no, there's no learning going on in schools right now. It's just babysitting. Yeah. Between the teachers that are out, between right. the teachers that are out, the students that are out, you have literally, I just saw a story where a police officer, gosh, a police officer is substituting in a school, I think I saw. Uh, you have, uh, I literally uh, was told by a friend that in his school, in a pinch, they, I'm not, I'm not uh, disrespecting a janitor, but a janitor was standing in as a substitute. So yeah, I'm not, no learning. Yeah. I don't think there's one size fits all. I'm not saying go back to remote schooling all over the country, but don't, just when they say 95% of schools are open, what they're leaving out is, yeah, and a whole lot of those schools, there's actually no learning going on. So and a lot of COVID getting caught, like people are getting sick, the teachers, the kids are getting sick. I mean, it doesn't make any sense to me, even if we just like, did distance learning for two weeks as an option. Um, that would make more sense to me. I, I don't understand why we're forcing kids and teachers into classrooms where they're all getting sick. And you're ending up with, you know, some of the outcomes that you're talking about. How is it? How is a janitor supposed to teach calculus? I mean, it's just crazy to me and it gives me tense. It, it's just crazy to me and it really gives me tinges of what I've experienced reporting on the Flint water crisis for five years. By the way, if you missed it, I broke a major story on Monday. It's in The Guardian. It's at the top of my Twitter page. Retweet, uh, like, share this story, read this story. The media shockingly is ignoring it and burying it. But myself, right. along with Charlie LaDuff, who's a Pulitzer Prizing Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, we broke that major racketeering financial charges were on the way, but the current Democratic Attorney General of Michigan, by all appearances, has swept those charges under the rug and has chosen not to go forward uh, aggressively going after the financial fraud that led to the water crisis. I digress. But it kind of, watching the press conference, it kind of gave me tinges of what I've been experiencing with the yeah. Flint water crisis, because basically the media... Yeah. And the Democratic Party and, of course, the Republicans have just basically said, yeah, yeah, it's it's over. The water's fine. <laughs> Move on. Yeah, so on, like yeah. this press conference, again, imagine nearly 3000 people died yesterday. That's a 9-11. That wasn't even mentioned. One point two million no, cases. Wasn't mentioned. Yeah. And in fact, they were saying that it was getting better. He was making the case that fewer people were going to be dying. And I'm not sure that's true. What about from the surge we're having now in a few weeks what are those death numbers going to look like? I doubt they're going to be as low as they are today. I just don't understand why. I mean, I do understand. Let me be clear. It's because the economy, that's all they care about fixing, right? They want to fix right. the economy. 